Let's speak to our Ukraine correspondent, Gulliver Craig, standing by in Kiev. Hello to you, Gulliver. Uh, this is a major escalation, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we could say this is not unprecedented in the sense that Russia already annexed Crimea, the Ukrainian peninsula, after a similar sham referendum in 2014. And the Western response to that was very much criticised for being too weak in the ensuing years. But now what they're talking about is annexing a much larger territory and also a territory in large parts of which there is clearly very, very strong resistance to Russian occupation. There's huge amounts of evidence that people, particularly in the southern provinces of Zaporizhia and Kherson, but also in eastern Ukraine, absolutely do not want this. Um, and it is a violent takeover of a large swathe of Ukrainian territory. I don't know if it's worth reminding you that the Russians repeatedly assured Ukraine and the West back at the beginning of this year that they had no intention of doing any such thing. But I think it's probably clear to everyone now that the Russians, the Russian leader's word is, is not worth much. And of course, the key other reason why this has to be considered as a major escalation is that the Russians have explicitly stated that they will defend their territory using any weapon that they deem appropriate. And many Russian officials have even made it more explicit by saying that they mean that they could use nuclear weapons if Ukraine continues to attempt to take back these territories by force. And Ukraine has made it absolutely clear that it's not going to give in to any kind of blackmail and that Ukrainian military operations to try to take back these territories will continue. So understandably, this is a very very serious and dangerous moment because these threats are being made very, very strongly by the Russian leadership. Yeah, and meanwhile, Gulliver, there are a lot of concerned people on the ground. What are the implications for Ukrainians living in those areas? Well, we already know that lots of Ukrainians living in those areas have been arrested, have had their property stolen, have been subjected to violence. Evidence coming out of the areas of Ukraine, particularly in Kharkiv region, that Ukrainian armed forces recently liberated is absolutely horrific in terms of the treatment that some residents of those areas have had at the hands of the Russian occupiers. And sadly, I don't think we have any reason to believe that things look very different in the occupied parts of Zaporizhia, Kherson, Luhansk, and Donetsk regions and um, so it's a nightmare scenario for them if this occupation continues I believe for, for, for a large proportion of them anyway we should not forget that there are a certain proportion of inhabitants of those regions who despite everything seem to still hold pro-Russian views and there are a certain number of people who have collaborated with the Russian occupying forces but violence that the occupying forces have clearly had to use in places like Kharkiv Oblast shows that uh, without using that violence they couldn't you know pursue the the occupation that they've been facing huge amounts of resistance and so that's very very negative situation for people living in those territories added to which now there is the very real prospect for the men of military age there of being conscripted into the Russian army and ordered to fight against their own country. All right, Gulliver, thank you very much. Gulliver Craig reporting.